Okay, good afternoon. This is HME131 on cruise industry. So our topic will be focusing on cruise industry. First, we're going to talk about its history and the start of the cruise industry. So the re-emergence and innovation of water travel in the later part of the century greatly increased the number of international travelers who avail of this mode of transportation. The industry profile, careers in cruise ships are among the most sought-after jobs by the hospitality students, yourselves. The industry provides decent pay and enables its employees to travel all over the world for free. Cruise ship in this era serve as floating vacation liners. Going into the brief history of the cruise line industry, ships changed very little during the first half of this century, although engine efficiency improved. Passenger staterooms, public lounges, and deck space on a cruise ship built in the 1950s were not much different than those on the Titanic. If you have seen the movie Titanic, it is an example of a cruise liner, but eventually um, it is a passenger liner. So cruise ships in this era serve as floating vacation liners. It became a commodity for vacationers now to, to ride in a cruise line for purposes that they want to travel places all over the world. And then ships have been used in traveling throughout the ages. And in the early 1900s, transatlantic, transatlantic voyages were introduced for travel and trade. During that time, ocean liners were expensive and only the wealthy can afford to travel first class. And a vast majority of the travelers who cannot afford first class travel were assigned to the steerage class. Steerage refers to the lowest decks in a ship and only offer basic amenities. So before, if you are not able to afford first class, so dito ka sa um, places nga uh, cramped, no, wakay chay first class ng mga amenities, so that is so called as the rage. And then the decline of the popularity of the water transport was brought about by the introduction of commercial air airplanes. However, the cruise industry flourished again with the introduction of the leisure travel. So cruise ships repositioned themselves by offering leisure activities to their passengers. The industry's popularity reached new heights with the introduction of the mega ships in the 1990s. So on starts at mga ships for vacation started in the year 1990s. So market perspective of the cruise industry. So the cruise ship is a stress-free stress and hassle-free vacation because you're only going to ride on the ship and then you're going uh, when it docked to different places. Um, it will also uh, offer you the chance to travel different countries. You know? It provides a new experience to vacationers as this differs from their usual vacation habits because you're going to live inside a ship, a very big ship or mega ship. And then cruises offers different activities inside the ship such as swimming, because there are swimming pools also, and then jogging shows and other recreational activities. There are also cruise ships that has malls you know, inside. And then cruises facilitate socialization and networking, and a cruise is ideal for special occasions like honeymoons, anniversaries, and rekindling and renewing of relationships, maybe meet some friends or new people. And then a cruise provides a brief overview of historical and learning experiences from one port to another. And in-house experts such as port and shopping lecturers provide passengers with information about the places included in a cruise itinerary. In the advent of highly sophisticated technology, cruises offer a safe travel experience. Sea vessels ensure guest safety and security. There are no instances or less instances wherein cruise ships have... Um, um, encountered accidents no, at sea, but there are instances wherein you're going to be seasick because of the big waves. These ships are made to um, withstand you no know, extreme weather you no, know, at sea. So the cruise package price is generally all-inclusive and then passengers will know how much the vacation will cost. So I will give you an example of this trip. No, the, the one I have showed you is on the life at sea uh, inside a cruise ship and this one is what is the feeling of a person traveling uh, using the cruise line and then classification of cruise ship we have the sizes gross register tonnage and then the capacity in each ship 
For very small, we have under 10,000 tons and then not exceeding 200 passengers. For small, we have 10,000 to 20,000 tons. So we have passengers of up to 500. And then for medium, we have 20 to 50,000, 500 to 1,200. Large ships, we have 70,000 tons. So it can have a capacity of at least 2,000 passengers. And then for the mega ships, more than 70,000 or more than 2,000 passengers. So I will show you an example of this mega ship. No, those ships from before and then now. We also have cruise ship facilities. Number one, the stateroom space. So if hotels have guest rooms, a cruise ship has a stateroom or a cabin. Ship staterooms are usually extremely compact, but all spaces are well utilized to answer all the guests' need. There are three types of ship stateroom. Uh, first is the outside state rooms that are meant for guests and we have a preference for an ocean view. Since most of the spaces in cruise ships are well utilized, this type of room does not give off a feeling of smallness due to its ocean view. The second one is the inside state rooms that are cheaper than outside state rooms because you do not have that much view since you do not have windows also. So to create a bigger space for the room, Several dean methods have been employed by cruise ships like the use of colors, patterns, and mirrors. And then lastly is with the hotel, suites are the most expensive rooms in a ship. Today, suites in cruise ships may be comparable to land-based hotels. Services and facilities inside the room are highly personalized um, to exceed guest expectations. So basically, you're just um, staying in a ship that, that feels like and looks like you are living or visiting a hotel land-based. So the same gihapon ang iyahang concept when it comes to rooms and then eventually you are just paying a much higher price because cruise lines are very expensive. And then next is we have a private space. So private spaces are reserved for the ship's personnel. So this includes a cruise cabin, so the curio gym and recreational facilities, the bridge where the vessel is controlled, the gallery kitchen and the machine area. So this uh, this space is for the personnel inside the ship. And then we have public spaces. So these are areas dedicated to passengers usage. So the public areas in cruise ships are similar with those of land-based hotels. The following are the areas that comprise the public area section of cruise ships as you have seen in the presentation. We have the reception area, the dining room, and then we also have a showroom in which this serves as the ship's venue for entertainment and business functions such as conventions, conferences, and meetings. And then we also have pool area. They also have gym, spa, and sports facilities. And then also children's area. This offers uh, services for babysitting to a wide range of age groups as compared with land-based hotels. This service may only be availed in top land base as part of their highly personalized services. So it is quite expensive. And then we also have gift shops. So it sells boats, souvenir items, and sundries. Big, uh, bigger vessels may even have dresses and jewelries by designer labels. And then clinic, um, internet center. There is an internet inside the, the cruise ship. So it means you can also send um, uh, your pictures, your videos in the social media. You can update your loved ones when you are there. And then casino operations of course and then that is on in an international perspective about cruise line okay going into the philippine setting of cruise lines so the philippines ferry and passenger ferries are the lifeblood for traveling in and among the philippine islands with 7000 107 islands to explore it is almost impossible not to experience a trip or two in one of the many forms that a ferry can take whether you need to travel short distances or extremely long distances, there is a Philippines ferry to suit you and your budget. Um, we, we have experienced this before the pandemic. We have road ships, I say for example, lines from Gupalion, Transasia, um, to go. Um, these are some of the famous um, ferries or boats that we have, or ships rather. And then for the smaller ones, we have the barges. And then... For short distances, the most common Philippine passenger ferry is the Bangka, smaller, and can be found just about on or near to every beach in the Philippines. You will be able to ne negotiate the fare with the captain prior to your voyage. So, uh, you have here Bangka boats, 
And then all the major cities can be reached by a Philippines ferry of some descriptions. Major ports are Manila, Cebu, Zamboanga, and Davao. From these ports, you can get to just about any island in the Philippines. There are also some ports within different municipalities or towns. So Philippine ferries that apply this vertical road are some of the super ferries and can take up to 46 hours or more depending on weather conditions. The Philippines Ferry Services has really opened up the opportunity to discover many islands in Visayas also, which helps local businesses and communities by bringing in tourists and tourist money that was not available prior to the Philippine ferries. So if you have visited Cebu lately, there are so many ferries there and um, um, uh, pa passenger ships, you know, the smaller ones in which you are going to avail or, or um, use to uh, become your transportation when visiting to other places. So why travel by Philippines Ferry? The traveling by Philippines ferries is an economical way for budget-conscious travelers to get around because it is much cheaper. It is also a fantastic way to see areas of the country that would be impossible to see by air or land travel. You have the chance to also mingle with extremely friendly Filipino people. Yes, we are friendly. A ferry trip is all part of the adventure and treat it as one on you will have risked nothing. So having said that long trips on boats may not be be everyone's ideal way for getting from from place A to place B. And the Philippines passenger ferries have not had a great safety record in the past, so it's always a good idea to have an idea first about what the weather is up to between your port of disembarking and destination. So if it looks like maybe a bit rough and stormy, particularly in the monsoon season or Amihan days, then postpone or take an airplane, no? Amihan or maybe Habagat. So um, you just need to, to look for the weather or check the weather first before um, going on a trip using ferries or ships. So what are some of the ferries on the Philippines? We have here um, the following, we have the Cebu Ferries, the sister company of the Super Cat and Super Ferry, which are also subsidiaries of the Aboiris group. So Aboiris is very, a very rich and famous family or group of family in Cebu particularly. So they owned most of the Super Cat and Super Ferries. So, uh, they call it the Cebu Ferries. And then we also have the Montenegro Shipping Lines and then Negros Navigation, so considered the oldest shipping line in the Philippines. Uh, it was established on July 26, 1932. And then we have the Super Ferry, which is now to go, the second largest shipping company in the Philippines, and it is one of the major subsidiaries also of the Abuetis group of companies. So in the presentation, you have seen here an example of the Cebu Ferries, Montenegro Lines, uh, the Negros Navigation, and of course, the Super Ferry, which is now to go. What are some of the career opportunities? Because I know that some of you really want to try working, you know, maybe have your AJT inside the ship. So you can do that also. So I have heard that there are some um, on-the-job opportunities inside the GO Ferry. So you need to also um, be open to possibilities, spe uh, specifically uh, because you are studying hospitality management. So um, some of you really want to work um, at sea because the pay there is much higher than the land-based um, hotels. So we have here opportunities for you. So the cruise line industry offers various career paths in the tourism industry. So cruise ships have land-based and sea-based operations from which a person can choose his or her career. The sea-based operations may be divided into bridge and hotel operations. So the bridge, the captain has a final authority on the bridge. The deputy captain is second in command. We have the chief engineer who oversees all mechanical equipment such as engines, electrical systems, and maintenance or repair of the ship itself. And then we have the chief medical officer as the head of the health um, provider of the passengers and the crew. We have the chief radio or communications officer Overseas interim satellite TV programming, ship to shore phone calls, internet service, and all other shipboard communication systems, which are very important because this is an important job because um, this person is the one who oversees um, the function you know, of having communication sa land. So if there are problems, we'll communicate the red so. 
And then for the hotels, a new hang opportunity. We have the hotel manager and then have front desk personnel also because there is an accommodation inside the ship. And then the shore excursion manager or the concierge which orchestrates the operation and booking of the port-based packages. We also have cruise director that provides guests with onboard activities and entertainment. We have the executive chef, so um, he's the one who manages the French kitchen brigade on the ship. We have the head housekeeper of chip steward manages the sanitation of all staterooms and private spaces. And then we have the food and beverage manager as well as its personnel or crew. And then lastly, we have the chief radio or communication officer who oversees all communication systems inside and out. So uh, we have the hotel, we have the bridge, and then also um, he is responsible for um, looking into if uh, the communication of the ship going to the land is good, you know, because we're going to travel because there's so many um, routes, rather, yung cruise ship. So therefore, it is very imperative that the chief radio operator knows to um, um, improve, you know, the communication of the ship and the land-based crews. So that is on the industry of a cruise ship and, and this that, that is just a history you know so I'm just lecturing you on the history and what it's um, not the totality of it but just a chunk of part so I will be seeing you on our next lecture so have a great day and enjoy